All right, guys. <laughs> uh, it has been a while. <laughs> Just a little while. Um, my drums are sore right there. Um, and I have a practice studio really, really, really close to my house, which is amazing. So, um, yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to make videos again. I just do not know how that's gonna happen because I'm really out of time. Uh, <laughs> so, I will try to post videos when I can. We're going to do this video of the snare, of the Ludwig snare. Um, which, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to hurry up. Uh, here is my awesome snare. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I hope that I can actually demo it soon. So to be fair, I do not actually know um, what I did in this video. Uh, remember I did this near early last year, I think. Must have been like February, somewhere like that. All right, so I forgot to say this on the video when I initially recorded this piece. But um, the idea was to have a snare which is very versatile and also that I could play Pink Floyd stuff with without sounding it too mar much off. Uh, I often see uh, tributes and um, people playing Pink Floyd with uh, drum stuff that it absolutely does not fit uh, the musical tone and sound that Nick Mason used back then or that it's using currently. So there is no relationship to that. And I wanted to have something versatile for my own stuff and have something that I could use for Pink Floyd projects. Of course, budget was also an issue. Uh, I really wanted a Superphonic, of course, because that's the snare that uh, Nick Mason had been using pretty much his entire Ludwig uh, career until I, I believe The Wall, I think The Wall was maybe the first album which he did not use a superphonic anymore don't judge me on that one i'm not an expert but um on the replacement for the superphonic that i was looking for and i definitely wanted ludwig for the first time because i love ludwig um i found that the acrolyte was actually a fairly good match the acrolyte shell it's really cheap to get second hand in the us and so i think i've spent like a hundred bucks on that um, and then um, the rest of the money went to just to the parts of the snare. I believe I spent about 300 euros, 350 euros maximum. I did not spend any anything more than that. If you want a Nick Mason sound, I highly recommend you to go for an aluminium snare shell if you don't have the possibility to buy an equivalent of the Superphonic, which is a lot more expensive. And I have shot the B-roll as the idea of making a tutorial of how to build your own snare kind of thing but um, honestly it has been like so long that I don't even know what I actually have been shooting <laughs> so I have to like re-watch everything again and with that idea while I actually watch it uh, I'm just going to explain what I did I guess So this snare, um, I bought it on eBay and I have been looking for it for a really long while and I wanted to get a really good deal on an Acrolyte or um, a super light, I believe. Um, a snare, just a shell and then um, buy the parts and you know build it myself because I love building drums and honestly that's the thing that I really want to do in this channel is that I want to make more builds, more do-it-yourself stuff, uh, more restoration and I want to do um, a lot of fluid content. So I have used a reversed dot uh, Remo butter head um, and the resonant one is an Evans UV1 I believe. No, uh, it must be something else. Let's see what it was. I don't, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> uh, just for sake of how much disconnected I have been in music, I don't even remember what better drum head I have on my drum kit. No judgment, please. Um, it had only like 
some label or something that came off and that I was still there. I think I should check my snare. I don't know if I actually removed that or not. <laughs> I don't even remember that. But we're gonna check in a second. So the most important thing is when you are cleaning your shell is that you have a cloth that you are sure it's not going to scratch the surface and that the product that you're using is the correct one as well. Uh, if you're using a steel shell then use um, steel polish. If you're using an aluminium shell then use uh, aluminium uh, polish or cleaner. Uh, depending on the result that you are looking for. Uh, if you want that it actually becomes like shining aluminium shell then also be careful to not choose the wrong paste. So what I have done is um, I bought the lugs and the snare system of the more expensive Ludwig, um, how's it called, models, snare models. Uh, so I have here the super light, um, superphonic, sorry, uh, superphonic um, lugs, which I really love how they look like in a snare and as well as the, I think it was P55 or something like that, I will look it up and I'll put it on the link. Um, and then for the sleeve washers, just, you know, what they had available and um, I added some, like for example, the plastic rods and such things, so it helps on uh, keeping the snare in tune. Uh, of, of course you have to have quality parts if you want your snare to keep in tune. Um, and I also have a pure sound snares and I also bought um, three 3S hoops um, which are a little bit thicker than um, the regular ones. Turns out I have a lot of stuff. And then it's just a matter of assembling it. I mean that difficult is not really I could have done this when I was maybe 12, you know. Uh, anyone can do this can can do this. Um, it's really straightforward and really simple installing everything just um, and, and that's it. You, know, you don't really need much uh, manuals and stuff like that. Um, uh, the only thing is that on my snare I still have to modify something. I still have to buy the end of the snare um, of uh, a different type of the original Acrylite because the distance between the holes is different and I do not have um, a drill. So without having a drill then my other option is either uh, find someone with a drill or um, buy the correct one. And honestly I don't want that this shell gets like damaged or something that it will look like improper or something like that. I don't really have the energy for that so I'm just gonna order like just a replacement part. And right now I'm not really needing, needing my sh my Right now I'm not really needing my snare anyway, so I don't really lose anything. Uh, it works, uh, it just doesn't get j as tight as I would like it to be, so it, it's sort of like... Um, it, it's good for a couple of things. I recorded comfortably numb with the snare, uh, so it works, you know. Uh, it just... it will be cool if it will have a proper um, snare bed, um, the butt end. Uh, of it also um, functioning.
Um, another information is also that I gave away my drum shells. Um, I completely gave them away. Uh, I thought I was not gonna have enough space here. Uh, turns out I have, but uh, in any ways I was sort of like pretty done by the time and I thought I was never gonna drum again anyways. Um, but uh, probably I will buy some new shells and do something else and instead of doing something uh, completely from the scratch with lugs from the scratch and everything probably just gonna buy uh, lugs or I, I don't know probably actually just buy them because it's it's the easiest and you can get the best quality out of it if you for example buy some timer lugs or sonar lugs and stuff like that uh, the problem with that, um, yeah, so I also don't have to deal with inconsistencies and like unfinished projects and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna get into that on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you next time.